so next we're going to have a panel with some amazing women. First up, Danette Rayom. Danette, where are you, babe? So Danette is a 15-year-old indigenous model. She's from Omaha, Nebraska. Yes, let's hear it for her. There we go. She spoke at the United Nations International Day of Girls event. And another thing that you do is you keep a honor roll grade system because she also thinks that that's a really important part of being a role model and a role model to being who you are uniquely and not being afraid of that and letting that shine. So let's hear it for Danette. And next up, a lot of you know, we've got Hannah Alper. Everyone, let's hear it. She's a 15-year-old blogger, motivational speaker, activist, author. I think she's just basically an all-around fire plug. She has a book that's come out called Momentous, which is small acts, big change. And basically what Hannah is inviting you to do is in any way that you can make the change in the world, that it's not only you should, but it's all of our responsibility. And she's a big advocate for standing up for things that you think are important and believe. And she invites people to come and take that on, and whether they're in school or their community. So let's hear it for Hannah. And lastly, for this panel, we've got Mame Baini. Now, Mame, you've got to give her a big heads up for going to the Olympics in March of 2018, being the first ever African-American woman to qualify for U.S. Speed, speed Skating Olympic team, everyone. I mean, Woo! Mame, and you guys saw her in the 2018 Olympics. So, Let's get right to the panel because all of these girls, you see them, they're highly confident, successful, accomplished. But what they're going to talk to you about is in order to go for things that represent who you are, you have to take risks. And with risks comes a lot of success and the, as the girls will share with you, a lot of failure. And they're going to maybe talk about just how they deal with the failure when they come up against an obstacle some of the hard times that they've experienced, and also just how they stay grounded through the whole thing. Because you know it's a process. And even when you're successful, right, how do you stay focused on the important things? So Mame, I want to start with you, because you've just come off the Olympics, mm -hmm. and you, you broke a lot of barriers already. Um, maybe just talk about first about having the courage to create a dream and then go for it. Yeah. Um. So I've always had a dream of doing the best that I can in everything because I had my dad and he's like, he's a, uh, he taught me how to be the best I could be and having the dream to go to the Olympics, like, I, I don't know how to explain it, like, it, it was it was a hard hard like process because I am African American and I'm surrounded by people who aren't and I'm different and I needed to learn that like it's okay to be different and that obstacle was it was a it was a good obstacle for me to go through so yeah did you feel <laughs> I, I know I know a lot of the young girls out here will sometimes you experience like where you kind of feel alone in something. oh yeah. Yeah. And even if you're in sports at times, because you are competing, mm -hmm. it's a weird thing of like, we're teammates, but we're kind of competitors. Oh, yeah. How did you deal with, who did you go to, or what skills did you use to deal with the times that you felt, you know, isolated, or maybe mm -hmm. like you, it was too hard to take on? Yeah. Um, the number one person, I'm going to mention my dad a lot, because I owe it all to him. So the one number one person that I always went to was my dad, because he like sacrificed his life to come here to get a better life and um when when i had like a, a really big problem in my team or in my team made me feel like really isolated i always went to him and he was like you know it's fine just like you're you're not there to please them you're here to to please yourself and you're here to do what you love and i just kept going and i didn't and i didn't stop i made the team so <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now Jeanette, you you did not grow up on the reservation but you have since come back right and maybe you could share you know of your experience because i think all of us i mean me with my height i was six feet at 12 years old <laughs> i mean that wasn't really particularly cool um 
they think you're a substitute teacher. But anyway, <laughs> there's not that's the best. You go to a new school and they're like, I'm like, no, student with you. But maybe I think all of us, especially as we're going from adolescence to young to being young women, feel we don't feel like we fit because there's sometimes images put out there that we're supposed to be a certain way and act a certain way and dress a certain way and look a certain way. And none of us do, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, even the people who do it, they don't. So maybe you could share where you got the idea that you could, it was okay just to be yourself, but that also you could impact other people. Where did you get that, that courage to do that? A lot of the courage and a lot of the confidence that I have right now, I really do owe it all to my parents because before I started modeling and even like in the beginning stages of my modeling I was not confident in myself I I didn't like my smile I didn't like when you know my big forehead I didn't like my teeth I didn't like my big gums you know there's a lot of things about myself that I like constantly picked on and thought it was an imperfection but six months prior to my article in Teen Vogue I sat on the steps and I cried to my mom and I told her I, I didn't think I was cut out for it. I didn't see myself in a magazine. I didn't see myself, you know, like really doing anything because I just wasn't, I didn't have that confidence. But sitting there and talking to her and, you know, my mom just has a way of like knowing the perfect things to say all the time. So after that conversation with her, my family and I, we kept working and, you know, we kept grinding. And, mm -hmm. Six months later, I was in Teen Vogue, and I was probably, now I'm probably more confident than I ever thought I would ever be. That's amazing. Now, what do you, because when we talked, I know that it's important. You want to impact other Native American girls from your culture to empower them to say, hey, go for your dreams. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what do you, what do you share with them to, to see if they, that, they can get that spark that your mom gave you on that, in that conversation? You know, where I come from, uh, a, lot of, a lot of our youth don't have that support system. Yeah. So I think me doing, you know, me being the same as them, me being Native American, me being the same, like coming from the same place that they came from, I'd hope that they'd look at me and see some type of light yeah. where they could think to themselves, she's Native American, she's a young woman. I'm Native American, I'm a young woman, so I, that means I can do it too. Yeah. And I know that, like, again, where I'm from, they don't have the same opportunities that I had because, because I didn't live on the reservation, I didn't grow up there. I grew up, like, all over the place in a big city, so I was given more opportunities. Yeah. But, but I think that is important, you know, if you have someone that you identify with and you can use them, um, that, it, oh, it is possible. Um, in your, in your case, Mama, you had to sort of be like, I'm going to be the one. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a whole other thing. All right, Hannah, let's get, I, I mean, you do a lot of advocacy. <laughs> you are a true maverick. Where do you get the energy and the security to go, I trust myself enough that I'm going to fight for these things and I'm going to organize? Where do you, mm -hmm. what, how do you take that on? Like, do you have a strategy when you see something, you go, oh, this doesn't, this is something I want to, fight for or fight against, what's your process of yeah, doing that? Yeah, well, I first want to say how excited I am to be here today and, and to be speaking to all of you amazing women and to be uh, talking alongside these incredible women. Um, so, yeah, I advocate for a lot of issues, whether it's poverty or education or homelessness, and I feel like a really big platform where I share what I'm passionate about and also where I learn about what I'm passionate about is the internet and social media. I'm sure that a lot of you here have Instagram or Snapchat or any kind of social media platform. I get that energy to share what I'm passionate about from when I see something that I don't like, when I see something that I don't like, and I know that we live in this amazing world in this amazing time where we have the power to talk about what we're passionate about on social media. We have the power to say, I saw this today, I didn't think this was right. This is what we can do about it. And I think that that's something so important that we can say. It doesn't matter, maybe you've experienced before, maybe it's an issue that's right close to your home, or maybe it's an issue that affects people all over the world that you don't even know. But whatever it is, you could take action on it because social media and the internet makes it so easy now. And I really, I get that 
energy from people that I meet. I get it from my role models. And I get it, a lot of it, I get it from you. I get it from young people that are passionate about changing the world. And that's why I do what I do. I do what I do to help inspire people to recognize that there are issues in the world that anybody can tackle. No matter how young you are, or how much money you have, or how popular you are, it doesn't matter because you, you can change the world. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you. You, you. you know, these and all the girls out here have experienced this. Sometimes when you stand for something, there are people that will criticize yes. you or, oh, that's not cool. Yes. Or, you know, what, how, what tricks do you have to fortify yourself that you, it's not that you don't care, because I think those criticisms, even at my age, they hurt for a second at least. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tricks or secrets yeah. on how you deal with that? Yeah, so I have faced a lot of criticism from my peers. Um, it was especially last year when I was in grade eight, or I mean, sorry, eighth grade. I'm from Canada, and so <laughs> we say grade eight. So in last year in eighth grade, um, my peers didn't support what I was doing, but more than that, they were bullying me for it. And because I was like the only person in the school that was doing something like that and was an activist and a motivational speaker. It's not really something that comes across a lot in schools. And so my peers around me didn't really like what I was doing and they were very outspoken about it. They come, whether it was online or offline, they would come up to me in school and make fun of me for it. And if I stood up against them, I, they would be like, oh, what are you gonna do, post about it in your blog? <laughs> Stupid. Um, and, or they would comment on my Instagram and mock me for it. And so I think that the number one tip that I would give for something that I did, you honestly, it's so cliche, but you kill them with kindness. Honestly, negativity breeds negativity, but positivity breeds positivity. It's, it might not work the first time, but if you say thank you so much for your opinion and then you just walk away, it works because you know that they didn't, that you didn't let them get to you. And that's honestly the most important thing. So when people were mocking me for it or making fun of me for it, you just walk away. You know, you say, you just, you walk away and you keep being yourself. I remember that, you know, something that my mom told me, who's here today, uh, she told me that like the best revenge is knowing who you are. And I know who I am. And I didn't change myself or I didn't try to fit in to the pe with the people at my school or I didn't try to be negative because I know who I was and I just kept who I was at heart and I got through it and now I'm a lot more confident and I'm in high school and it's, um, yeah, I, I, would just, I would just say to keep being positive because it's definitely hard having the courage to act sometimes, but it's worth it because you have the power and the responsibility to, so why not do it? I, I think that's advice. Oh, thank all, you so much. That's advice all of us could take. Thank um, you. you know, I heard an expression that um, Mother Teresa uh, was asked to go and, and uh, march against the, this war, and she and she said, "Oh, I, I won't come." And she said, "But if if you'll do a walk for peace, I'll show up." And so it's really sometimes just what we're fighting for, right? We're mm -hmm. not like you're saying we're not fighting against oh, the people who are criticizing me, you're fighting for yeah. your goal. And I think that's a really important thing in life because the energy goes where we put it. Now, t talk about failures, because I think a lot of times what keeps us from being a maverick or being willing to stand in our own real voice is not only the fear of criticism, but what if we fail? What if we say, hey, this is really important to me and I'm going to stick my neck out and... Um, and it may not happen, or, or sometimes it happens you know, later than we want it to, or what, ha what have you. Mame, I'd like to hear from you, um, you know, what, what ke kept you going? Because you're in a sport that it's you know, milliseconds, and it's, you know, yeah. you're in fourth the whole time, but everyone crashes, and somehow you win. Exactly. I mean, it's all these elements that are, are, are moving targets. Mm -hmm. How did you, when it wasn't going your way, how did you say, okay, I'm going to keep going? What, keep, what kept you going? Yeah. Um, so an example of, with that, of that would be 2014, 15, I, um, I, trial, I did a trial for my first juniors, and I didn't make the team, and I was so bummed. Like, I started crying. I <laughs> wanted to stop skating because it was like 
I've never failed before. I've always won my nationals. I always came in first, and this was the first time that I've ever lost. And I, I, I went back to training like two weeks after, and I was like telling my dad that, you know, I lost, but it's okay. I'm gonna make my next juniors no matter what. And so I trained like the hardest that I ever trained at that moment. And I did make my first juniors, and it, it felt really good. But it felt really bad at the same time because I broke my ankle, um, and so it just it was crazy. And my dad like begged me not to go, but I was like, you know, remember last year when I said that I'm gonna go no matter what. So I went, and like that that moment or that those moments were were like the the stepping stone, I guess that would be, when I'm like, you know, no matter what, no matter whether I lose or if I win, like I have to keep going, going because, like the the end result or the finish line is either right there or or it's not, and you just it's just gotta keep going, no matter what, just keep going. So. <laughs> but that you make that sound really easy. It's not. <laughs> it's not, guys. <laughs> I think, you know, I think a lot of what I hear, though, is the power in that you're doing it also for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's another thing is sometimes we spend a lot of time doing so many things for other people yeah. or the thought of how will they react? Will they like me more? Will they do this? Mm -hmm. Instead of taking that time to know who am I? What do I really want to do? What do I really like? Yeah. And I think you can stand on that even when it gets hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because... I, I'm a people pleaser. I like to do what everyone wants me to do. And especially this year, I had to figure out how to do what I wanted to do and how to make myself happy. And like the last four or five years, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I was figuring out how to, how to be happy in both, like pleasing people and both in myself. So yeah. That's, <laughs> Jeanette, what about you when you're, you know, you're on this quest and, and trying to show other young Native American women um, that you can sort of dream to do whatever you feel. How do you go about continuing to pursue the, your own dreams even when you're unsure? Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. Um, I think just continuing to reassure myself why, why I continue to keep going and why I want to keep going, even though there are points in my life where I feel like this isn't going anywhere. I just I should just stop. I, you know, you just have to keep reassuring yourself and keep reminding yourself you're not doing this just for you, but you're doing it for every little girl that feels like she can't do it, or feel it feels like she's not good enough or feels like she don't have the opportunity to. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important too, is when it's bigger than just us, right? If we're doing, I mean, there's a time to do things just for ourselves, but sometimes when it's bigger than us, that's pretty powerful. Now, Hannah, this, to look at you from the outside, we would all think this, you, you know, you're a fighter and it comes easy for you. And so what about someone who is like, yes, I want more of that, but it doesn't come as easy for me. Mm -hmm. um, how, in what ways would you encourage them to try to, if they have something they really want to stand up for um, or point out? Do you have advice? Because to look at yeah. you, you know, your mom probably would say that you were like that when you, when you were born. <laughs> um, I think that, you know, if you asked my mom like that, she would probably say that I was a really compassionate and outgoing person when I was younger. And so that definitely helped. Um, also, first of all, I mean, Sure, my life might look really great from the outside, but I mean, I have my struggles just like anybody else, and we all do. I mean, it's, I have a really hard time balancing my life sometimes, you know, a lot of the time actually, you know, with a social life and my activism and being in high school, it's hard. Um, so something that I would give advice if you wanna make a difference, but you're not really sure how to, is I mean, number one, find your community and, Thankfully, you are in a area full of young people who are passionate and who are outgoing and who are daring and unstoppable and who are, well, mavericks. So find that community of mavericks, you know, whether that's on the app or on social media, find that community of like-minded people who are passionate about the same things that you are because you can't make a difference alone. I'll just 
tell you you can't. You have to do it with other people, whether that's your parents or other what, your peers, whether that's Mavericks that you meet today or tomorrow or any day. Just find your community. Uh, something else that I would say is I share a formula wherever I go, uh, whether it's a speech or an event, anything. And it's all about making a difference. Um, and so the formula is issue plus gift equals change. Mm -hmm. So you, know, you first, you find your issue. That's the cause that you're passionate about, uh, whether that's education or anti-bullying or anything that you see that you're not happy with. And then you find your gift. Your gift, it's a talent. It's anything that you're good at. It can be art or music or writing or baking or anything that you're good at or athletics <laughs> or modeling or you can use anything that you're good at to make a difference. And then you put those two together and you create change. And honestly, it, it seems, the issues in the world seem really overwhelming, but with every issue, there's a solution. So just find your issue, find your gift, find your community and create change. And again, anyone can do it. And I mean, look at all of us. We found our issue, we found our gift, and now we're uh, making a difference. Thank you. Um, now, Mame, you know, you represent uh, your, you know, our, our most obvious athlete. I think we're all athletes inside, but here, you're our <laughs> most obvious athlete. And you need, a, you need a certain vehicle to do what you do. I mean, that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And so to look at you, you're, you have worked hard and built this body to help you accomplish your goals. Oh, yeah. And a lot of young women, they struggle, oh, I'm too tall, I'm too small, I'm too big, I'm too light, I'm too dark, my hair's too straight, it's too curly, you know, whatever, whatever they are. And even you, who celebrated for being so talented and gifted in your sport, mm -hmm. have had to manage things even with your own physique. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I am surrounded by people who love me and people who take care of me like in everything that I do, whether it's school or church or skating. But unfortunately there are people out there who want to tear you down and you have to be able to like basically say, okay, cool, thanks for your, Thank you for your opinion. All right, bye, see you later. Yeah. So an example of that would be when I was like 14, this was around the time where I didn't make my first juniors, I had a coach who, were, who was like, who was really mean. Um, he, he didn't like appreciate me for who I was. He always called me fat. He was like, you're not, he basically said you're not supposed to be here because I was with, I, I was um, I was the only African American person in my on my team. I was surrounded by Asians, and I was like, you know, maybe maybe you're right because I'm not because I am different. But like, so what? <laughs> um, it's okay. It's whatever. Like, cool. I'm different, and yes, I'm black, and yes, I have curly hair, not straight hair, hair, and yes, I have my muscles are my legs are way bigger than um, the other girls but that's also because I'm stronger than them and I'm gonna beat them in races, so, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> so, and I, and I overcame that because one, he left because no one really liked him, but that's okay. <laughs> and two, he, and like two, I, I, had, I had my dad with me and he basically, and when this was happening, he basically, basically told me to like not listen to him and to just do what he, he wanted me to do and just to do what I was here to do, and that was to skate and to get better and to do, and to eventually go to the Olympics. And yeah, it happened, and I'm, I'm awesome, so. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, listen, I think when we, I think this all goes back, this maverick conversation of going, keep coming back to who you are, the individual. I mean, I'm 6'3", 180 pounds. I was never gonna be a size two. My foot is a size 12. It's just the way that it is, right? And so I think for us to try to keep fitting into a mold that we mm -hmm. think exists, it doesn't exist. You just, you create your own mold because that's who you are. And, mm -hmm. and that's the beautiful thing about you. And it doesn't mean you don't have bad days and you don't tell a friend like, I'm feeling, I'm having a wonky day. I think that's completely human, but I think it's really important to identify you know, it's like your, your beauty, right? It's uniquely your beauty. 
and you don't feel like you have to fit in to a certain subset anymore, do you? No, I don't because I've, I've grown to the point like spiritually and mentally where I can understand that beauty is not what's appealing to the eye. That's right. <laughs> Okay, now, uh, you guys are all busy and doing a lot of things. What are the things that you do, and Hannah, I'll start with you, where y do you have any, you know, little things that you do to help you just kind of stay grounded and, mm -hmm. and c stay on your North Star? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, something that I do to keep me grounded would probably just be hmm, hang out with my friends, just like, being a normal 15 year old uh, who's really bad at math. Um, <laughs> excuse me, just hanging out with my friends um, and just keep doing what I'm doing, surrounding myself with positive people who believe me, who encourage me. Don't surround yourself with toxic people who are just going to bring you down, you know? Surround yourself with people who are going to encourage you and support you in everything that you do. Thank and you. Mama, what, about, what about you? I mean, you just came off going to the Olympics, mm -hmm. you know, crushing it in the qualifiers. Oh, thank you. Well, <laughs> let's call it as it is. And then how do you though even, and cause you know, even success can kind of yeah. pull you a little. So yeah. how do you stay grounded and focused on the, on the task <coughs> at hand and Excuse who me. you are and, and things like that? Yeah, um, so the, I, I'm not good with attention. I, I like being in my own little bubble and having my three friends with me. So after I made the team, like it all exploded. I was like, oh my gosh, so many other people are coming into my bubble and I have no idea what to do. So <laughs> like what I have, what, what keep, keeps me grounded is watching Netflix. That's it. Yes, okay, watch Netflix. <laughs> That's it. Like what, being what do you watch on Netflix? Sorry, I'm <laughs> everything. Um, I I'm a romance person, so I like thanks. romance. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, just and like hanging out with my with my friends and just being myself. And I like reading because it makes me like go out of this world, out of this crazy world that I live in, and into like crazy romantic action things. And I and I like I like that. So yeah. <laughs> that's that's what that's what my grounded is. My my new world, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> And Jeanette, what about you? How do you, if you, if even me being grounded back into your own power, do you have little tricks or any tricks that you do to sort of say, okay, I'm gonna get myself back, back to on point? Usually, I kind of just like take time to myself. Like, of course, you know, I'm I'm a teenager. I like to go hang out with my friends. You know, I like to go play basketball. You know, just teenage things like that. Yeah. But. I also like to spend time with my family because I am a big family person. My family is like my little rock. I, I don't know what I'd do without them. And another thing is um, I have an eagle feather yeah. and it's very sacred to me. Whenever I'm not really okay, I guess, or I don't really feel grounded, I, I sit in my room and I, and I pray with my eagle feather because, you know, when it's just me and the creator, there's, there's nothing that couldn't keep me grounded. Yeah. And I, I think it's important because all of you sound like you have very strong, great families and not everyone gets to grow up with that. I personally didn't get to grow up with that. So I think another really important thing is that as you get older and older that you develop your own ways to ground yourself within yourself in case you know, you're not as fortunate to have um, support systems at that moment you know we all maybe we'll get a teacher or a mentor floating in and out but also how do we find to have the power mm -hmm. ourselves okay so girls I'm going to go to each of you and I want to ask you if you could challenge any of the young mavericks here just put out one challenge to them so when they go home and they're thinking about um, all of you and being inspired by you if you could challenge them to one thing in their own life um, Hannah, I, I can see you're ready to go. Sure. I would like you to come. I would like you to come and like work with me. I, just I would love that. Okay. But I want to move to LA. Your, your dishes into the, into the dishwasher, right? We can ask her mom later. We'll get there. Real. No, real I'm sweet. kidding. So um, I okay. So my challenge, you know, naturally I'm going to do the challenge that's on the Maverick app. Um, I would just my challenge is for you to go back home or even here today to find your issue find your gift, 
and find how you're going to put those two together to make a difference. Get, get an action plan. That's what, you know, whenever I go to take a, this leadership camp or anything like that, we get together an action plan. So plan an action plan. You know, find your issue, your cause, find your gift, your talent, and what are you gonna do about it? So that's my challenge to you. There you go, that's Hannah's, okay. Mama, you got one? Hmm. My challenge to you guys would be to love yourself because that's a really hard thing. And I think especially for girls, yep. thank you. Like, I, I'm, I'll be totally honest, I'm still learning how to love myself because I know that I am different, but like, find your, be able to love yourself no matter what because especially to young girls and when people are saying, no, you have to be this, no, you have to be that, okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll listen, but I'll just go out the other ear and I'll just love myself. So yeah, that's my challenge that. to you guys. <laughs> okay, the next. I know no. they took some good ones, but. <laughs> yeah, they did. But I have a challenge on the Maverick app, and it's be a culture hero, which mm. is, you know, share whatever you love about your culture, food, music, anything that you love about your culture. You could do that one if you'd like. But my challenge to you for today is when you go home, be helpful. You know, like help out around the house, help your parents, help your sister, help your <laughs> whoever. <laughs> All the moms. Help <laughs> moms, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Now, I just have a quick question. Are we going to do any Q&A from the audience? Are we going to do two or three? Because we talked about it, but we never established. Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah. so you guys have an organized um, question for the ladies, because here's an opportunity. And you will get to see them after and take photographs um, with these three women who I wish I could have hung out with when I was your age and had friends like you. And we have a microphone coming. So if any anyone has a question, that, yep. The microphones, yep, here we go. No question is a bad question. <laughs> um, stand up, stand up. Oh, okay. Um, so my question is um, for, ah, you two at the end. Um, you, Me? Yes, and you. <laughs> um, that and Mame. How do you two deal with racism, especially internalized racism? Um, within the um, Olympic community, within the modeling community, within, um, within you know, life, how do you deal with that? How do you react to it? You know, what's your plan of action with that? You wanna go first or? You can go first. Okay. I may put everybody well. in a headlock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> um, how I personally deal with it, like in the modeling industry, there is a lot of cultural appropriation with the, you know, like with Coachella and everybody, you know, it's surprisingly, it's fashionable to wear a headdress when it's, a headdress is not a fashion statement. It is something that's very sacred to our culture. But um, <laughs> how I handle it is, you know, you have to knowledge them about that stuff. You know, they're either being like really disrespectful. They know they shouldn't, but they they do it anyways, or they really just don't know what what it means to us. You know, so you just have to knowledge them, or I just knowledge them about what what it really is to us. That's kind of how I deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, like, uh, so I, like that story that I just said about my coach, like that was the only one thing that I experienced. And unfortunately, I was, I was like really scared to, to say anything back to him. And I, and I regret that. Like that's the one regret that I've always had, like not saying anything back, not standing up for myself. So I guess like how I would handle it is like standing up for yourself, like no matter what, no matter how scared you are, like in the, in the end, like you're gonna not, like, like you're gonna like knowledge them for what they did and you're gonna stand up to them. And that's the one thing that I would want to like, hey, that's, that's not cool. Like don't, I'm a human being, I have a name, please mm -hmm. use it, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> And if that doesn't work, then she puts them in a headlock, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, ignorance is a, sometimes we have to identify too that people are ignorant. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, it's like you want to fight it, but then also it's, they're ignorant. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> Anyone else have a question for the ladies? Oh, 
Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> My name's Amanda. Oh. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> and I have a question for uh, Hannah. Hi. Hi. Um, why did you want to become a motivational speaker? Sure. Uh, so I started my blog, so on the internet or whatever, when I was nine years old. And then when I was nine, I saw this organization called the WE Organization, and I saw this campaign that was all about clean water, and it was all about raising money for clean water. And I thought, wow, this is so amazing. And I didn't even, I was like, wow, there are people around the world that don't have access to clean water. I can turn on the tap every day like it's nothing. But there are people all over the world that don't have that opportunity. So I went to my principal at school in grade four and fourth grade, <laughs> I'm sorry. And I told her, hi, Mrs. Smith, I want to speak in front of the school and I want to talk about clean water. And then I want us all to raise money about it. And she said yes. So at a character assembly in November, I gave my very first speech and I talked about clean water and how important it is. And I even remember like the first three lines. They were like, what can you buy with $25? And I was talking about like a Mario game, a pizza. Then I said, you can also buy clean water for one person developing community. And that was the first time that I spoke in front of people. And I felt so, and I, I felt, I knew that that was my gift. I knew that that was the thing that I could use to make a difference. Talking to people, as you can tell, I really like to talk. <laughs> and so why not use it for good? So why not talk about the issues that I'm passionate about? And ever since then, I've just been talking to people about what I love and it's my favorite thing in the world. Oh, thank you. Anyone else? Oh, this this young lady over here to the side. No adults. You're over I'm 20, adult. forget it. Yeah, I'm way over 20. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> it's fine. I actually have a question. I'm really disappointed that my name is Tony. Hi, Tony. My Hi. daughter Lily is not was able to come today, but she was. She's in seventh grade, and I have a question for you, ladies. Um, how to help her get through the toughest school years? I think she'll ever go through body image, boys, I mean, you name it, she's going through it right now, and it's, as a mom, I'm really trying hard to say, you know, stick to your ground, you know, stick to who you are, mm. you're beautiful no matter what, mm -hmm. and she always says to me, but you're my mom, you're supposed of course to say she that. Yeah. say that. Yeah. <laughs> so how do I help her, like, what are your suggestions that I can, you know, give to her? I have one. Okay. Because I have three daughters. I know. Is, I love you and thank you. You're my maverick. Oh, thank you. You're very kind. <laughs> you know, listen, we have to remember ultimately we can't protect them from going through these bumpy times. That is part of the process. However, you're modeling every single day. So really what we are, the moms are saying to the girls about how we feel about ourselves, they're going to come back to that. And then, and I think obviously the girls are going to give you other insight because of yeah. where they're at. But I think it's that reminder, they are not listening to us. No. They are watching us. No, they're, yeah, they're, they're watching. Right. They're and watching so them. I think it's important if I go, oh, you know, I'm I know this weight over here and it's my butt, and then my daughters are tape recording it versus, um, yeah, okay, big. Let's, that's what we're doing. Like, because yep. my daughters are also very, they're big and strong. And so it's the notion of helping them through it, but knowing, I don't know if one of us could avoid going from 11 to 17. It's, it's just a brutal process and development. And, um, and then the girls maybe could give you some insight about some tactical things. But just remember, everything. She's watching. She might be ignoring you simultaneously watching every single thing. You know, you know, she's watching, and unfortunately, I see her <laughs> some of the things I should <laughs> Girls? Um, well, I just have one thing, like, make sure that her friends mm -hmm. are like actually there and not there f to use her, you know, like yes. make her have her, have her friends love her, like no matter what. And yeah, friends come and go, but like make sure her friends are good. Cause I've, I've had tons of friends who are good, but also friends who are, who are there to use me cause they know like what I do. Right. So like, like my dad always tells me like have friends that are your support system or your village so 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like to add on to that, I mean, I feel like friends are such a big part of it. I mean, I think that I'm 15. I think that body confidence is really an unavoidable issue. Mm -hmm. And your daughter is probably going to go through it, but having the right people around her makes all the difference. I feel like that since I got a really good group around me and I have a lot of really good friends, mm -hmm. I feel like that completely just shot up my confidence. Yeah. And it gave me a really big confidence boost. So I feel like surrounding yourself with people who uh, will support you and love you, uh, and just who, people with just who you have fun with, yeah. honestly, it makes all the difference. Like again, my body confidence shot up like, the second when I actually knew that I had really good people surrounding me who weren't going to leave me. So yeah, so I was like, that's something that you should just keep an eye out for. Thank you. Okay. I think my advice would be um, just that constant reassurance that even though she may not think the same thing that you continue to tell her you are beautiful because like I said, my mom has always been my confidence booster and even though she may not have thought I was listening to her, and you may think that your daughter's not listening to you when you tell her that she is a beautiful person. Mm -hmm. She's still gonna go upstairs and look in the mirror and like, dang, I really am beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so, Good. thank you. I really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Girls, anyone else? Oh, we got one more. Um, I have a question for the girl on the right. <laughs> Who's right? Right. Right oh, or so I'm me? Buy right. <laughs> So I'm an athlete, and um, it's kind of hard to be a female athlete these mm -hmm. days, especially because, like, a lot of people, um, especially, like, boys in my grade will oh, come yeah. up to me and be like, oh, you're probably not that good, or, like, you know, like, stupid things that I probably shouldn't <laughs> listen to. Yeah. I still kind of do. Mm -hmm. And so my question is, like, how do you, tr like, how do you not, how do you ignore it? Because it's kind of mm -hmm. a constant thing. Yeah, um, this is probably going to sound weird, but don't ignore it. I think it's good to listen to it, so that's like your fire, and say, all right, <laughs> I'm, you think I'm not good, but wait like two years when I beat your butt. So, yeah, <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's, I don't know why boys do that when they're younger, and even, uh, you know, I played professional beach volleyball for many years, and I would have guys off the street say, I bet you I could beat you in volleyball. And you're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, you know, there's a, a thing about uh, saying, what you think of me is none of my business. At that point, you can just take yourself out of it and let the boys just have their dialogue. Um, because really, it's a high compliment to you that they're threatened enough by your power mm -hmm. that they've got to actually say something. So yeah. every time they do it, flip it in your mind, be like, <laughs> yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. Any any time somebody has something to say, it's because it makes them uncomfortable, and so it's not your thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're just really scared of you. So. Yeah. True. Mame, she'll put them in a headlock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give me a call. I got you, girl. <laughs> all right. Any other questions? I said that. The, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like a maze. As like for um, the, I forgot her name, but like also for Hannah, because I've been reading this book about Native Americans, like Indians, and that's what they used to call them, and how they had reservations and they didn't really have like an opportunity, like they thought them as like weak people and stupid, so then they would like, they thought they wouldn't really have a chance, and I thought like, that's really amazing how you found like your gift. <laughs> and so like I was wondering like, how could you find your gift like if you don't really know what you're really good at? That's a great question. That is a great question. Um, how are you asking how did I find my gift? Ever since I was a little girl in I think my mom can testify. I've always wanted to be a model. I've always wanted the spotlight. I've always wanted the cameras on me. You know, that's, that's always been my thing. To go to what you said about how, you know, how we have reservations and they wanted us broken. The reason I continue to follow that dream and the reason I believe in that dream is because they wanted us gone. They wanted us to be isolated away. They didn't want us to have any opportunities. 
but with me doing my job and with what and with me doing with what I do I'm I'm glad that they wanted that for us because if if they didn't want that for us I wouldn't be right here you know what I mean I wouldn't be here telling you guys my story and I wouldn't be here telling you guys that I want to do with my life what no I'm not going to say with no but with very little Indian girls thought they had the opportunity to do. So I'm not, like I said, I'm not doing this just for me. I'm doing it for everyone who, who don't believe in themselves so that when they see when I make it, they will believe in themselves and they will be able to make it. There's, uh, oh, there's, yeah. <laughs> there's a group, okay. <laughs> My name is Aaliyah, and I wanted to ask to Mame, um, how is it you want to be the person you are right now? Oh, <laughs> so um, so <clears throat> I, 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 I like doing this because it means that I get to influence and inspire young girls like you guys, and like and. Honestly, I didn't know that I would ever be in this position because, like, <laughs> it's it's a, it's a really awesome position to be in. So I, I, I <laughs> um, it's just yeah. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> Can you please repeat your question? <laughs> How is it the person you want to be right now? How am I the person that I want to be right now? Oh, my dad is the person that like influenced me to be the person I am right now because he's the one who sacrificed everything and he's the one who like kept talking to me even though I was really annoyed that he did. But he kept talking to me and telling me like, be who you are, just don't don't ever give up. And I think that's that's why like being in this position so that I can tell all you guys not to give up. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> so you guys will have a, ta a chance to meet with the ladies and take pictures because I think we're going to go on from there. And so let's hear a round of applause for Danette Rayom, Hannah Alper, <laughs> and Mamey Biner. You guys, thank you for sharing your story. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. And I'm getting it today. And, uh, you know, I want to say one thing to the young girls because you can say, um, when you look at Mame, you can tell she has an obvious gift and, and all of these girls, it seems so obvious, but if you are reading things and you're touched by them, I do believe that things will make themselves be known and you will find your passion. So I know sometimes our gifts are not quite as obvious, mm -hmm. but just keep listening to your own inner voice and heart. And I think they make themselves show up as long as we stick to that. So, ladies, thank you so much for your inspiration and for your stories. Thank you. And um, you guys will get to visit with everybody after. And uh, I thank you so much. Thank you. And then we're going to. Thank you, guys. Thank you.